This program is brought to you by Penguin Classics, publishers of the Keith Haring Journals. A stunning Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition featuring 90 black and white images of classic artwork and never before published Polaroid images, this is a remarkable glimpse of a man who, in his quest to become an artist, instead became an icon. The Keith Haring Journals, available now in paperback. Welcome back to Penguin Classics On Air. Okay, my second guest is Tanya Agathocleos, who is an assistant professor of English at Hunter College in New York and has worked on the 19th century novel. She has a forthcoming book titled Urban Realism and the Cosmopolitan Imagination. Tanya, I'm really glad you could be with us today. I was just speaking with Sue Bertwistle, the producer of a number of adaptations of Austin and Gaskell. And one of the things that I was wondering in speaking to her was why Austin is more often adapted than Gaskell. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, yeah. I think part of it is that Austen's novels are funny, so in some ways they make for a better t- entertainment. She has such a, um engaging and witty style that it just works really well in terms of um, acting. You know, the novels are almost like plays. They include a lot of conversations. So they make a really good platform for actors. Um, and the Austen adaptations that I've seen often have wonderful actors and actresses in them. Um, also, her novels are more escapist um, for us, as watching them today, because they have genteel settings, and we see we get to see wealthy people entertain themselves with teas and walk around outside mansions. So that's a big draw for us, and they're primarily about romance as well. So they're sort they make for feel good movies, I think. Whereas Gaskell's works are um, her two most famous works, Mary Barton and North and South, are primarily about social problems. They have dreary industrial settings, and they show us children starving and dying, so they're not exactly fun. Well, it's interesting you say that because Sue was saying how um, the ones that they have adapted, that she's had most fun adapting, are the Cranford stories and novel uh, and Wives and Daughters. It's interesting that actually Gaskell's wrestled with some of the issues in the Industrial Revolution are less often adapted. So so the ones they've adapted of Gaskell are, have some of the same qualities that you are pointing out as, as, as being the reasons why um, Jane Austen's works are so often adapted. Yeah, that uh, makes sense to me. Well, one of the things when I had, actually when I had watched, I think, Wives and Daughters, there was still enough of a social conscious in it that I jokingly said to a colleague that, you know, is it possible Gaskell, is Jane Austen with a social conscience? Well, it's interesting. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal recently that was called What Would Jane Do? And it was all about how her books provide moral instruction by focusing on manners and mores and how ways of speaking and dealing with people involve moral thinking at every point. So in that sense, she has a social conscience. She didn't believe that the richer classes should get away with poor behavior. And as we know, Elizabeth Bennett takes Darcy to task for his prejudice against the social inferiors. But it's true that Austen does not take on the major social problems that Gaskell does. She has a much narrower version of England in her novels, I think. Do you think Do you think that's a benefit to the Gaskell novels? I mean, or does it make her, are you reading her a little bit, feel a little bit more pedantic? Um, it is heavier going, but it's it's a really interesting window into the period. I mean, they're writing in, in different periods, essentially. Austen's at the tail end of the Romantic period, and Gaskell's writing in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. And... She's writing in a period where a lot of other authors like Charles Dickens and um, Benjamin Disraeli are also writing what became known as Condition of England novels, hmm. um, novels that explicitly addressed class problems and the alienating facts of industrialization and city life. So she's very much a, a creature for time and is valuable that way. And her writing, you know, her writing has different kinds of appeal than Austen's, I think. Um, also, Austen's are set in the most of them are set in the wealthier south of England, in the countryside, while Gaskell's major novels are set in the industrial north in Manchester. So they give us very different views of not only different periods, um, different sort of sides of English life, but also different parts of the country, literally. Sue was saying that that Gaskell, when she wrote the Cranford novels, said, I need to get these stories down because, you know, by the time I die or later this century, this way of life will be completely gone. That's right. And you see that also even in North and South and Mary Barton, there are nostalgic returns to the countryside at various points in the novels. In North and South, we start in in a more sort of genteel countryside way of life and then 
the novel moves into the North. And then in um, Mary Burton, one character, when she starts to die of old age, she sort of becomes senile and returns to her childish memories of her life in the countryside. And Mary Burton, the other character, see her as truly happy in that moment because she's back in the countryside before industrialism sort of tainted everything.